rolling the dice. That's definitely one of the most uh, controversial topics in Hawaii right now. Should there be gambling legalized in Hawaii or should there be no legalized gambling? Hawaii, as we'll find out, is one of only two states in the nation with no legalized gambling. And there's an organized effort right now to change that. Today, I have a guest who is an expert not only on what's going on at the legislature, but on gambling. John Radcliffe, thank one you, of man. the most famous, I should say, lobbyists in Hawaii. Well, I don't know about famous, but <laughs> thank you very much. Well, John, tell, first give us a little background on your, you and how did you get into lobbying and how did you end up lobbying at the Hawaii legislature? Sure. I've been lobbying at the legislature now for about 35 years, maybe a little longer than that. I came here uh, as the executive director of HSTA. Which is the Hawaii State Teachers Hawaii State Association. Teachers Association okay. And was the executive director of that organization for 13 years. Uh, and then I retired to run for Congress and was luckily, happily defeated uh, because that led to a, a really, really great life uh, afterwards doing a lot of work for other people. Uh, I found out that uh, people wanted me to advocate for them and do things for them and I'm very happy to, to do that. Uh, I also was the uh, Associate Executive Director of the University of Hawaii Professional Assembly, UHPA, for 17 years and retired from that in, I think, 2007 or so. So I've been at the legislature now since 1976. There's only one other, one other person who is still elected, uh, who was, is still there for that long, and that's Speaker Calvin Say. That's right, that's right. What about Joe Suki? No, Joe came in 82, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Wow, so you've seen a lot of history. Yes. And as I said, you know where all the bodies are buried, right? I don't know about the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about the bodies? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, what are, you know, just because we have a little bit of time, can you give us some of the big issues that you work on at the legislature? What are some of the important things that you are fighting for or you are well, advocating I, for? Sure, I still represent the University of Hawaii Professional Assembly, the professors. I enjoy that very much. They're good, good folks to work for. So I'm down there working on education. Uh, I have a number of clients in the business world as well. So I lobby for business and industry. Uh, and a lot of my work is in the area of taxation. Uh, so much of the work that I do is to try to keep uh, the state of Hawaii on an even keel so that we don't go too far to the left or too far to the right, although that last part hasn't been a big problem of ours ever. We haven't really had a big far uh, to the right. Not since I've been here anyway. Right. Uh, so, you know, trying to keep folks in the middle of the road is, uh, is basically where I am. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think government works best when we have compromise and people are able to get along and everybody gets a share of something. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been an, you're an interesting person because you worked with Governor Abercrombie and helped him get elected. You yes. worked with Mayor Mufi when he was running for both, mayor. Both wonderful men. Both. And then you, you know, you know a lot of legislators on both sides of the aisle no and have helped them and worked with them. So you're right. one of those people that's truly bipartisan. You've gotten along with both yes, sides. Yes, I do. I'm very proud of that and mm -hmm. I'm very happy that I get along with both sides mm -hmm. and uh, that you know, I have friends on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me about this whole gambling issue. Um, what what were some of the proposals last session? Maybe we can get into your, your yeah. particular proposal, but what, give us an overview of what were some of the proposals that came I, out I, last session. I think there were 17 bills last year, 17 different bills that were put in for a variety of things. Uh, there was bingo, there was uh, Hawaiian gambling, there was uh, off, uh, what's, what's it called, when you internet gambling, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, there were a number of casino bills. Uh, so the interest out, in, out there in Hawaii has become uh, uh, deeper in the last several years than it has heretofore. I, I started uh, trying to uh, talk to people about having a casino in Hawaii uh, uh, back in 2000. And I did that because at that time we were going through an economic crisis as well. We were in very bad straits. Not enough money was coming in and the only way people in Hawaii uh, can think to raise money is to raise taxes. Uh, and that ne isn't necessarily the best way to do it. My uh, con concept was to increase the size of the pie, to make the pie bigger. If you make the pie bigger and more people have more jobs and more money coming in, then more people can pay taxes and they don't have to be, you know, we don't have to tax the dwindling base more. 
Uh, and that's the reason I wanted to go for a casino because there's, they're so endemic in the world and, and in the rest of the United States. Uh, there, we have 311 million people in the 50 states. And of those 311 people, those who live in 48 of the 50 states amount to 307 million. They all have casinos or some form of gambling in their state, all of them. Uh, so there are, what, 1,500 gambling establishments in the United States. Uh, there, there are lots and lots of casinos everywhere. California has got 58. My home state of Wisconsin has, I think, 26 or 28. Um, you know, they're fairly endemic in, uh, throughout the United States. They raise money. They're great entertainment. People like them. And here in Hawaii, they would be, it would be a wonderful thing. Because if you ask yourself, what do people do in Waikiki when the sun goes down? Do they go to Hawaiian entertainment shows? No, we don't have any of those. Well, we have maybe one. And then we've got the Society of Seven show. So we've got maybe two. Do we have any movies to go to? No. No theaters in Waikiki. So what can you do in Waikiki after dark? Well, you can go to bed. And that's about it. So I think that there, there would be a real market for, uh, to, have, to have it there. And also, if you look at, at Waikiki, and many people don't because they don't go there. Local people don't go there. If you go to Waikiki, you're going to find that it is a mess. The middle part of Waikiki is, it, it looks like a, 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 some sort of derelict village. I mean, there are broken down fences and... And, and cement block buildings with people not living in them, you know, all kinds of wood up all over the place, empty lots. Uh, it looks awful. And that, that could all be, uh, be fixed up and, and made better, and we could have people in there, we could, make, we could make money for the state of Hawaii, and that would be good. So basically your proposal is a single standing building in right. Waikiki, not affiliated with it necessarily with any hotel. Right. Because you're, you're basically saying that if, if you had uh, an affiliation, if you built a casino in a hotel and one a particular hotel got to build the casino, which they'd probably want to do, well, um, then that would be unfair. So your, your idea is instead of putting gambling in all the hotels or in one hotel, you would have this one building. Yes. That, that's it, essentially. Now, uh, is there that, a site that you're thinking of in particular? Well, there are a number of sites that could possibly happen in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are, there are uh, sites you know, in Waikiki which are fallen down and you can look at them mm -hmm. and you could put prop you know you could put a casino in there it's a question of buying the property and you mm -hmm. know that's, and that's that's the problem of course uh, but it can be done and uh, you know it's available uh, there are other sites as well but the the, the best one for me before, so you don't get into all sorts of political uh, arguments about putting it outside of Waikiki because mm -hmm. uh, that raises all sorts of you right. know uh, problems for people Putting it in Waikiki is the best spot because, frankly, that's where the tourists are, and the mm -hmm. tourists are the main are the main folks that you're going to want to uh, have come in mm -hmm. and enjoy the place. Now, there was a proposal that kind of got thrown in at the end of the session last session, um, the last minute on the last couple of days, that had to do with this freestanding building, but it was actually <coughs> in. I think it was somehow attached to the Aloha Tower Marketplace, which is downtown. Well, was do you know about that? Yeah, I do know a lot about that. There's a yeah. Aloha Tower bill. Uh, which, which had to do originally, the, the original bill, the Aloha Tower bill, had to do with doing away with Aloha Tower uh, mm -hmm. Administration, or whatever it's called, authority. Uh, and that's what that was about. Uh, there are people in the legislature who saw that bill and said, hmm, what we could do is take that bill, and the, the, the casino bill has a commission in it. You'd have to put a commission together, and then the commission would you know, be the one that would, would end up giving the license out later on to, uh, to whomever, you know, got it. Um, and so we could put the commission in the Aloha Tower building. They could be housed there. And then we could put the, we could put the uh, uh, casino itself in Waikiki. So there was kind of a, you know, end run there on, on that uh, kind of thing. Uh, we looked at that bill, and uh, we checked with the le uh, Legislative Reference Bureau and uh, everybody else in, in the legislature. Is that legal to do that, despite the fact that the title's a little funny? Uh, and the consensus was that it was, and so legislators did run with it. It did go all the way to conference, uh, and the House, uh, in the last day, uh, decided that they didn't want to take it up. 
uh, I think probably mostly for political reasons, uh, having to do with whether or not uh, uh, everybody that said they were going to vote for it would be voting for it. You know, it would be difficult to say at that point. So, so, so it died. So basically, well, you're, it's alive you're, now. But yeah. yeah. So your concept is that rather than raising taxes because we the state needs more money, um, your idea would be to license, have this license go out. And and I think it was a ten million dollar license per year for ten years. Is no, that right? No, how, no, how, what, what, no, how did it no, work? not at all. It was the, in order to, or, in, if you, anyone who applied for a license, mm -hmm. say you were, you and I were both in the casino business, and, yeah. and we both said, mm, Hawaii, that sounds good, I'd like to try that, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll apply for a license. There's a $1 million application fee mm -hmm. to just apply. It doesn't get you anywhere. You have it to be allows serious you, then. Allows to, you to, yes, to it apply. allows you to put your, okay. your name in. So you all put right. your organization your name in, and that, that all that does. The company that got the winning bid, mm -hmm. that would get the winning bid, would pay $150 million okay. as a fee. And primarily, that would be for infrastructure and other things that the state would, you know, would, would have to meet the state needs and so forth. Uh, and any problems which might come up, it's a, it's a huge fee. It would be a great thing. But that would be a straight-out fee. And on top of that, our bill calls for a 15% general excise tax on everything that happens inside the casino. Mm -hmm. And so we believe, uh, in fact, our economic uh, professors and so forth tell us that that would raise around 100 to $200 million a year in new taxes for the state of Hawaii every year from now on. So what would that tax be on? You mean if you buy chips or you go buy a drink? I mean, not, right. not chips you eat, but chips you yes, gamble with? Yes, not chips you eat, yes. <laughs> Is yeah, that it would what be you on mean? everything, everything okay. all the money that you spend in, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the uh, casino, yes. Okay, and you think the yeah, tourists would go for that? all the games that you that? bet on? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure they'll go for it. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody wins something, what do you, how does that work? And they're taxed on the winnings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, all right, now let's get into this. Now, I will be killed if I don't ask you about all the, uh, the, the anti-gambling things. Okay, because like, as I mentioned to you, Ask I don't have away. a position one way or another right. myself. So, uh, and one of these days, I want to get a good debate going on, on the show rather than having both sides on at different times. But what I wanted to ask you was, all right, <laughs> what we hear is that um, it's going to hurt small business because people are going to spend their money in the casino, and they're not going to go and spend that, money yeah, that's, in the business community. That's the Linda Lingle argument. And she's always held to that argument that people come to Hawaii, and and people have uh, X number of dollars, and and if they and they intend to spend all that money, and if they spend it on gambling, then they won't spend it on Malia's sandwich shop, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't the case at all. People, you know, when they come to Hawaii, they spend money on all sorts of things. Right now, uh, they spend their money on liquor. Uh, they spend their money on, um, I don't know what, because there's not much to do in Waikiki. Uh, I suppose they can go uh, surfing or something and spend money on, on that. They mm -hmm. can go out on boats and things like that and spend money on that. Uh, and they can spend money in a hotel. But, uh, so, you know, but in, the, in the rest of the world, that's, that certainly hasn't proven to be the case. As you know now, uh, Casino gaming as an entertainment form is all over the world and in places that said that they would never do it, including Japan, Korea, Singapore, uh, and so forth. All of them doing great with gaming. Uh, Singapore, for example, I believe that their gross national product went up something like 17% uh, when they put the casino in into Singapore. So it, it doesn't have that effect. It, does, it, it, it makes money. When we take our money from Hawaii and we go to Nevada and spend it, mm -hmm. and we spend about a billion dollars a year, B with a billion, we spend a billion dollars a year in Nevada in after-tax dollars, our people do. That money multiplies itself in the Nevada economy by a factor of about 3.7. So Nevada gets the benefit of about $3.7 billion from Hawaii every year. We could spend at least some of that money at home. So I bet Nevada doesn't want us to have legalized gambling. Nevada hates it. 
Yeah. Nevada is doing everything it possibly can to kill it. Isn't that the ninth island of uh, Hawaii? Yes, as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. the, the Boyd people love it. And we have all sorts of people in uh, our state mm -hmm. uh, who are connected up to that sort of thing. And that, that's also uh, you know, interesting because you know, we, we would like to keep some of that money at home. Okay, now what about the issue of crime? You have, you know, the thought of, when you think of gambling, you think of prostitution, organized crime, um, you know, uh, just, uh, just bad things yeah. happening, gangsters, that kind of thing. So is that, is that the case? I mean, we already do have a big problem here with illegal gambling. So yes, what about a, bringing in legal we gambling? We do have a big problem with illegal gambling. Mm -hmm. That takes also about a half a billion dollars, maybe more, uh, out of our economy every year, it's, and it's gruesome and vicious. Mm -hmm. uh, that would stop when people get a chance to, to, to go to a, a legal uh, entertainment and, gam and gamble where it's safe and, and secure and so forth. They would do that as opposed to going to some place where they're going to get mugged or hurt or something. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on now. Uh, the, the, I think the most salient study on this was done by Congress itself a number of years ago. And I, I have the quote here from the study, taken as a whole, the literature, that's all the literature, shows that communities with casinos are just as safe as communities that do not have casinos. Now, as I said, in my home state of Wisconsin, uh, it's, I, of course I left there when I was 18 and I'm close to 70 now, so it's a long time ago, but um, in my home state of Wisconsin, there are 28 casinos. And uh, my dad and all of his friends and so forth, uh, on Sunday, would normally go to church on Sunday morning and then they would get on the bus and they would be bust a few miles to the casino and they would spend the afternoon there having fun and then would you know, come, come home around dinner time and that would be their entertainment for the week. Uh, and a lot of people do that throughout. So, so they're, they're, and there's no crime, there's no, there's, no, there's no bad stuff involved. I think the studies now indicate that, the, that there is a correlation between crime and, and casinos that I think is, is fundamental, that there are people who will steal from people who have cash. Uh, and, and that goes up when there are more people around and more opportunity to do that. But I do believe the studies indicate that that's no more than uh, 6%, and that's a theoretical 6%. So our local police department, which has never been able to stop illegal gaming, despite the fact that it's in Chinatown in an area about six blocks square, <laughs> Uh, haven't been able to find it. And some in, of our public housing, too. Haven't been able to find it in 50 years. Yeah. Uh, they, hate, they hate the idea of having legal gambling in Hawaii. I think we should have legal gaming. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what about, um, okay, you have, you know, the crime issue, the, the jobs issue, um, the economic issue, the tax issue. Um, what, what else um, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to, to bring, like in terms of local people that will say, all right, I don't want Hawaii to look like Las Vegas. Then it won't look like Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They I mean, don't why want... Would it, why, wouldn't it, why wouldn't it look like Connecticut? Or why wouldn't it look like New York? Mm -hmm. Or why wouldn't it more appropriately look like Hawaii, which it will? I mean, there are all sorts of gaming casinos in London. And they said, I don't want to look like London. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't want to look like Milwaukee. Well, I you guess know? the difference is that you're saying there's going to be one casino. But then yeah, people, we're not... might say, people might say, well, that's going to open the door to more casinos. Well, I'll tell you, in those states that have decided that they're going to limit casino gambling, as a, the aforementioned casino, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, ca uh, Connecticut, where they have two casinos, they established right in the legislation that in the event that the legislature goes nuts, and decides that they want to have more casinos down the road, then they lose all the income on the casinos from the first two. And they go, no, we don't want to do that. So they don't do that. And so you could easily put up uh, legislation to prohibit more than one. The problem I see is that people are talking to me and they're saying, oh, why can't we have more than one? We should have more than one. And I think we need to limit this uh, to something which would be a good form of entertainment, but let's not go nuts. You know, let's, let's, let's have something for tourists to go to and local people alike to go to and, and, and have a good time, uh, but not necessarily, uh, you know, go crazy and have, have them all over the place. Now, there's a lot of young people that I talk to that would like gambling and um, a lot of older people who don't want it. And so I think, I think there's, a, there's definitely an age factor uh, in part of it. But 
Um, you know, in terms of um, what's going to have to happen to actually get gambling to be legalized? Does it have to go through a public vote? Do we have to change the Constitution? Do we have to just have the legislature approve it? How does that work, and the governor as well? Legislature. Legislature and the governor. Mm -hmm. Legislature. If it goes to the legislature, uh, which is no easy task, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 3,000 bills put in the hopper every year, and about 93% of those fail every single year. Mm -hmm. About 7 or 8% of them get through. And then the governor's got 45 days to veto bills that he wants to veto. There's all sorts of, of uh, you know, abilities to stop, 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 stop. But in fact, that's our whole governmental system is to prevent things. So, uh, you know, that they could, they could prevent it that way. Do we need to have a referendum, a vote on it of the people? No, we don't. Uh, nothing in our Constitution that would prohibit gaming or is in favor of gaming or anything like that. It is a business and entertainment like movies. I mean, uh, you know, which is kind of interesting because we're in a situation where we somehow have blinders on about this one form of entertainment that 307 million people already enjoy in the United States and 4 million don't and most of those live in Utah and Utah is never going to have gaming. I'll tell you a secret. Utah is pretty close to being a theocracy. You know, they're, they're not really too much into this other stuff. They're into what they are and right. they're not going to go into gaming and they're not going to go into liquor and they don't even like dancing much. Okay, well, what about um, you have next session coming up and you have a new group. Tell me about this group that you formed or, or that has been formed with, um, yeah, I think, Liz. Yeah, I didn't form it. Okay, but tell me about this group that you're involved with. Citizens, it's Citizens for a Better Way, mm -hmm. which is a, a group of uh, kind of soccer moms, uh, basically moms and others who have looked at the situation and said, yeah, uh, we are in tough straits in Hawaii and we are... You know, our, our, our government services are way down. We, you know, we, we're not providing good government service anymore. We just aren't. Uh, we have all sorts of problems, and we've got to do something other than raise taxes all the time. So this would be a good thing to do. And, and they're very much in favor of it. And a lot of entertainers are for it as well, because it would give them a venue. It would give them some place to play. It would give them some place to sing. It would give them some place to to share their talents with the rest of the people in Hawaii and the world. And that would be just great as far as I'm concerned. So you're going to actually have, they're actually going to have their own show on Alelo. Right? Yes, Citizens for a Better Way is having a show on Alelo. I think it starts, uh, or at least it's being taped today. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is, it's going to be a, you know, kind of a series. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think they're going to be bringing in people that are for it and against it and have an honest discussion about gaming and how it works and, and, and why we ought to consider it in the state of Hawaii. Well, that'll be an interesting show. So I'm glad yes. we can give it a plug. Why, thank you. <laughs> okay, so in terms of um, what's going to happen next session, tell me about that. What are the good, what are, can you just, besides gambling, give us the big issues that we're going to be facing next session and how does gambling fit into that? Well, as you know, we, we faced a $1.3 billion uh, uh, budget shortfall, budget shortfall mm -hmm. in 2011. And, and two, 2000, for that was for the 2012, 2013 right. fiscal years, right? Right, that's mm -hmm. right. And, and the legislature, by raising taxes, uh, theoretically uh, will raise around $600 million. Mm -hmm. And then they went home and they told the governor, you find uh, $700 million worth of more cuts to make in various departments and good luck. Right. And they left. Uh, and, <laughs> and they didn't come into special session? And, no. And they didn't want to come into special session? And they session. didn't want to anywhere near right, special right. session. Because that would you know, raise all sorts of specters, and they wanted to let it go. I mean, th this particular last session, at the end of the session, was very difficult for a lot of people. And the legislators themselves were, were, were pretty contentious. Right. Uh, among the themselves. House and the Senate House were fighting, and the, Senate, and the, and the governor was fighting with everybody them. Everybody and... inside was, was having a difficult time. Right. Because it, they didn't have enough money, and, and they, they, was, they didn't know what to do, and, they, and so they went home. And it was interesting, too, because you were right in the middle of this, but they were trying to raise a liquor tax, and they were trying to raise a, all these other taxes right. again. soda tax. Soda and, tax, yeah. and, and yeah. people were saying, enough of the taxes. Stop raising taxes. And, and yet they still raised $600 million worth of taxes, as you pointed out. A lot yeah. of it is through the tax exemption removal. 
We yes. talked about that on our show. Yeah, that low kalapa. Definite, as Lowell said, and he's he's really the the top mm -hmm. expert on this. Lowell knows. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a real uh, business burner. It just yep. kills us. It I kills know. business. It impacts the airlines, right. mats and shipping, or all the products that are coming in here. We have the uh, construction companies. I mean, there's a whole long right. list of people impact or businesses right. impacted, so, and it's ultimately the consumers. So you're going to see that exact same thing come out again. In 2012, we're going to, as we did in 2011, as we did in 2010, as we did in 2009, we come into session and we go like, well, who would have, we don't seem to have enough money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, huh. Mm -hmm. And so we, every year we're surprised that we don't have enough money, despite the fact that, you know, our, our needs are X and our income is Y. Uh, so, you know, they want, to, they want to do something. So there will be a lot of effort to raise taxes. Now, the killer in this for everybody is that 2012 is an election year in which everybody in the state Senate and the state House has to run. Because of all, reapportionment. All 76 have to run because of reapportionment. Right. Nobody gets a pass. Nobody gets a ride. Nobody gets it free. So this year is going to be tough. All the people are going to be looking to find out what happens? And raising taxes in this environment is going to be very, very hard. I imagine we'll come back with another liquor tax. We already have close to the highest liquor tax in the United States. Um, well, taxes on almost everything is yeah. almost the highest in the United States, right? Yes, our taxes on our income tax on cigarettes is close, not not as high as New York, and not as high as one or two others, but very, very high. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes are nine dollars a pack or close to it nowadays. Uh, you go down to Waikiki and have a couple of mai tais or, or something like that, mm -hmm. and you put twenty dollars down, and the bartender will say, "Where's the rest?" Yeah, you know? exactly. So exactly. you know, I mean, there's it's a lot of money, and it's a lot, and a lot of that taxes. So uh, we only have twenty seven seconds left. So oh, I want to ask you. No, that's okay. We have all these big issues facing us. So how does gambling in in twenty seconds fit, fit into the next year? Is it really going to be able to pass during an election year? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's. Uh, I, I think most people uh, are coming to the conclusion now that it is a viable option. Here we've got a situation where an, indust an industry wants to come to our town and say, "I want to hire three thousand people full time mm -hmm. and at good wages and good jobs. I want to give you one hundred and fifty million dollars." Yeah. And uh, and we're saying no to that. Okay, well, we'll have to stop on that because we're out of time. We'll have to have you on again. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been News Behind the News, and this has been John Interesting News with John Radcliffe, and we'll have to have you on again, and we'll have a debate about gambling. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Sure. Aloha.